as our voices we raise and our shouts of joy ring out. Know that the Lord is God, it is He who made us, we His people sing. Let the ground shake as our voices we raise and our shouts of joy ring out. Know that the Lord is God, it is He who made us, we His people Sing. Oh, shout for joy, all the earth, as we enter in His gates. Give thanks to Him, praise His name, for He is good, His love is forever. is forever. So let's lift our voices and give Him a shout of praise. He's the Prince of Peace and He's the King of all kings. Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Alpha, Omega, His love is forever. The Lord of Lords, the Lamb of God, the Lion of Judah, His love is forever. to invite you to our YouTube channel, All People's Church Bangalore. We are pleased to make a lot of resources available on this channel. There are numerous playlists uh, that include our Sunday sermons, our TV programs, our daily devotional called Living Supernaturally, and also our Foundations course and several other playlists. 
a resources that you could use. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated with all the new resources that are being released every week. And all of this is given freely to you to equip you live powerfully and victoriously with Jesus Christ. Enjoy these resources. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, it's always our joy and delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God and uh, also in prayer. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, staying in touch with us and continuing to watch uh, these telecasts. Uh, we do want to point you over to our resources available on our church website. Uh, there are plenty of uh, sermons, free books, uh, a lot of other resources that you could make use of. And we'd encourage you to uh, visit our church website regularly and make use of those resources. Tell others about it. Uh, over the next few weeks, we want to just remind ourselves of something that is very simple, uh, that is very elementary. And yet, at any stage in our Christian journey, in our journey through life, uh, this is very fundamental. It is very important for us at, at all seasons of life. And that is to believe, to believe in God, uh, to believe His Word, and through faith, uh, handle the situations that we encounter in life. And so I just want to begin this uh, short series uh, today, and just by emphasizing uh, the importance of believing God's Word. You know, you and I need to make a decision in every situation to believe God and to believe His Word. The way we believe God is just by believing His Word, what He has spoken to us. His Word is His bond to us. It's His commitment. It's His promise. And from God's side, He is not going to fail the Word that He has spoken to us. And of course, we have His Word given to us uh, in the, the written Scriptures. Uh, that is the primary way that we uh, receive the Word of God just by reading uh, the written scriptures. Uh, we understand the heart of God. We understand what God has spoken uh, concerning different situations in life. And in every situation, we must choose to believe what God has spoken. That means you choose to believe the Bible. You choose to believe the scriptures and what God has said. Uh, you and I make a decision that we begin with the Word of God uh, we stay with the Word of God, and we will finish with the Word of God. So every situation in life, you say, I'm going to start with the Word. What does the Bible say about this situation? I'm going to start with the Word. I'm going to stay with the Word. That means as I journey through this circumstance, as I journey through the challenge, as I journey through this experience, I'm going to stay believing the Word of God. And I want to make sure that I finish believing the Word of God. That means we don't quit midway. You know, uh, believing God's Word is not something we just try. And uh, if it works well and good, and if it doesn't work, you know, we just quit. That's not the way we're called to believe God's Word. We start, we stay, and we finish just believing what God has spoken to us. You know what the Lord Jesus said about Himself in Revelation 1 and verse 8? The Lord Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So uh, he's saying, look, I am the beginning and the end, the start and the finish and all the way between. It is him. It is he. And it is about him that, that he's saying, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Now, if he is the starting and the finish, the beginning and the ending, uh, his word, therefore, represents him to us. You know, we cannot see him uh, physically with our eyes at this point uh, in time. So what we have is his word that he has spoken to us. And therefore, his word is the alpha and the omega on any situation, any circumstance. It's the beginning, it's the end. Uh, you take God's word as your starting point and you take God's word as your finishing point. 
uh, for any given matter. I start today and I finish with the word of God concerning that situation. You know, so uh, in life, uh, we go through all kinds of things. And uh, there are different situations where we uh, must choose to believe the word of God. Now, obviously, in order to believe the word, you and I need to know the word. We need to know what's in the Bible. What did God speak concerning various situations in life? So uh, you and I need to know what the Word of God says concerning needs we face. Now, we will all face various kinds of needs in life, uh, and we need to know what does God say? What did God speak concerning that need uh, in my life? Uh, you need to know that God has spoken, saying that He is your shepherd, therefore you will not be in want. Uh, you need to know that his, He has said in His Word uh, that the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He will give grace and glory, and no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. You need to know that he said in his word that God will supply for all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. And we need to remind ourselves of those, those words concerning their different need, uh, concerning a provision in our lives, um, concerning success. Uh, you, you and I uh, engage in so many things uh, and we want to succeed. But uh, what did God say concerning success? He did say in His Word, uh, in Psalm 1, for instance, He said that, you know, if we believe His Word, we meditate in His Word, we live by His Word, that we will be like a tree uh, planted by rivers of water. He said that what, our leaf will not wither and whatever we do will prosper. Or in Psalm 25, verse 12 and 13, He said, the man who fears God, God will teach him in the way that he, he will choose and this man will dwell in prosperity in the goodness of God. Uh, in Joshua 1 and verse 8, he said, he told Joshua, you know, you live by my word and you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. So even concerning success, uh, the various assignments we take on, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's, if you're a student, concerning your studies, your exams, uh, as a young professional, concerning your career, uh, in all of these areas, we want to succeed. We want to do well. And, and, and we need to know the word. We need to know that God has promised uh, to prosper his people and to cause us to succeed. And so we need to begin with that word. We need to know what God has spoken concerning the family, uh, concerning children, uh, concerning what, uh, you know, our marriage and all these areas so that we can believe the word of God. For instance, he said that he blesses the house of the righteous. He has said in his word that the house of the righteous will stand. He has said in his word, the man who fears God, they will be mighty on the earth. He has promised in his word that all your children will be taught by the Lord and they will have great peace. You know, I like these. There are many things that God has spoken, that he has promised in his word concerning different areas of life, concerning our safety. You know, when we travel, you go out on the road, you go out on the street, you travel by... Uh, automobile, you travel by uh, uh, aeroplanes and, and all of these things. You, you say, God, I, I want to be safe. What has God spoken concerning your safety? Uh, he has said he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Uh, he has given us those promises uh, concerning um, our health, concerning healing for our bodies and health for our bodies. God has already spoken in his word. So in order to believe God's word, we must, of course, know the Word of God. You need to, you and I need to meditate in that Word, put that Word in our hearts, uh, and just let that Word be the beginning of everything in every situation. We just say, I'm going to believe the Word of God, and I'm going to live by this. Now, why is it that we give so much importance to the Word of God? Uh, why is it we place so much emphasis on the Scriptures, on the promises of God, and, and on the on the things that God has spoken, why are we, you know, are putting our whole life on the line, so to speak, uh, on, on His promises? Well, there are several things that you and I can consider. Uh, for instance, think about this. The fact is that God cannot lie. You know, uh, when people give us their word, they may keep it, or they may break it, or they may take a long time to fulfill it. But God, on the other hand, the Bible says that God cannot lie. Um, Numbers 3, verse 19, uh, again, a very familiar scripture to many of us. It says that God is not a man 
that he should lie. Um, he's not the son of man that he should repent. That means he's not going to relent or go back or recant on the promise he made. Uh, has he said, will he not do it? Has he spoken, shall he not make it good? So that's why God's word is so reliable because God himself uh, cannot lie. Titus 1 and verse 2 says that God cannot lie. He speaks the truth. And so God's word is truth. In John 17, verse 17, Jesus said, Thy word is truth. So that is why in every situation, this is, we can go to the word and we say, God, I am putting my life on this word, on this promise, because you cannot lie and your word is truth. I'm going to stay on this word. I'm going to go through the situation believing the word that God has spoken. So concerning your need, so my God shall supply my need. Uh, concerning you know, your success, you say, my God will make me like this tree uh, that bears its fruit in its season and I've, whatever I do will prosper. You believe that word and you stay on that word. You see, uh, we must understand that God esteems his word highly. You know, when God gives his word, uh, it is very unlike how we give to our words. Uh, for many of us, our words are cheap. Um, we say things and sometimes we, you know, we wonder, I mean, did, did I really say it? Or, well, actually, I didn't mean what I really said. Uh, and, and so, you know, we take our words very lightly, but not so with God. The Bible says in Psalm 138 and verse 2, the psalmist says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Notice what the psalmist is saying. You have magnified your word above all your name. That means God has, uh, God esteems his word, the things he has spoken, even more important or much more higher and greater than even his own name. Now that's how highly God esteems his word. He says, this word, it's more important than my own name. Uh, and, and so God uh, highly esteems his word. And so you and I must understand that, that God will not go back on his word. And you and I must come to that place where we regard the word of God in such a, a manner that we have high regard, high esteem for the word of God. Uh, also, another important thing for us to understand is that God promised to watch over his word to perform it. And you find this in Jeremiah 1 and verse 12. God says, I will I watch over my word to perform it. And you need to know that the God who spoke this word, he's a God who cannot lie. His word is truth. He regards his word so highly. It's more important to him than even his own name. And he is watching over that word to perform it. The promise he made to you concerning your home, your family, your marriage, your health, your finances, your present, your future, your safety, your protection, every area of your life, the word he has spoken, he is watching over that word to make it good in your life, to perform it in, in your life. So it is up to you and me for us to choose to believe that word. You see, it is only when we believe the word of God that we will see that word performed or fulfilled in our lives. You know, we can know the word. You know, you hear it, you say, yeah, yeah, I know that's what the Bible says. Maybe we even quote it and we can, you know, recite the scripture. And then that's good, that's important. But we need to go beyond that. We need to come to a place where we believe the word. You say, God, I am putting my life on that word, that promise. I believe this word. I believe that you will perform this word in my life and this is the way it's going to be for me based on your word and according to your word. Take for example, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 45, after Mary received the word that was brought to her uh, by the angel, this was what was given to Mary. It says, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So Mary believed that word, and now the blessing was pronounced over her. Blessed are you who believed. 
because there will be a performance of what was spoken to you by the Lord. You see, you have to believe that word. When you and I believe the word, then we will see a performance. We will see that word actually coming to pass in our lives. Now, what happens if we don't believe the word? Well, the Bible is also very clear. Uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, the writer of Hebrews, uh, referring to God's people, he tells them, that mentions about them. He says, for the, indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So he's saying, look, uh, the same message was given to them as, as it was given to us. But the word that was given to them didn't do them any good. It didn't profit them. They heard the word. Uh, they received the word. They probably understood the word. But it did them no good. Why? Because it wasn't mixed with faith uh, when they heard it. You see, so it's so important that when you hear the word of God, you, you receive the promise of God, that you mix faith with it, that you choose to believe it. So believing is a choice. It's a decision that you and I make that this is God's word. God cannot lie. His word is truth. Uh, he regards his word really highly and he's watching over his word to perform it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand firm. There is nothing that can overpower or overthrow the word, but I must believe that word. I must mix faith uh, with that word so that that promise of God, that that word of God will be fulfilled in my life. Uh, Hebrews 6 and verse 12, uh, the writer of Hebrews, once again, he points to Abraham and he says, you know, don't be lazy, don't be sluggish, but be followers of those who through faith and endurance inherited the promise. So God made a promise. God spoke the word to them. What did they do? They had faith. They believed that word and they had endurance. That means they stayed with that word. They didn't just start with the word, but they stayed with the word until the very end. So the beginning and the ending, right through, they endured by believing that word. And that's what I want to invite you and me to do, is to believe the word of God in every situation. You know, God gives you a promise, uh, you encounter a situation that may not match or may not be in line with the promise. It may be totally opposite to the promise. But that's when you and I make a choice to believe the word. I'm going to start with this word. I'm going to mix faith for that word. And I'm going to stay with that word until that word is fulfilled in my life. And even after the word is fulfilled in my life, I'm going to continue believing that word. Because my life is based not on the experience, not on, on, on what is happening, but on the Word of God. I will continue to believe the Word, the promise which God has made. I want to invite you to do the same thing. When you believe the Word, you will see God perform it in your life. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. Receiving God's Guidance, Offenses, Don't Take Them, and Water Baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches and ministries. So download these at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. Uh, before we close, I want to take a moment to pray with you uh, and just ask the Lord that uh, whatever your need is, and whatever area you are believing God for in His Word, I want to join with you and ask the Lord for a performance of that Word because God is watching over His Word to perform it, to see that Word fulfilled. His Word will not return to Him void. His Word will create. His Word will accomplish his word will cause things to take place in our lives. So let's believe God to see that word fulfilled. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the word, the promise you've given to us concerning various areas of our lives. 
And I just pray for those listening, those watching, God, even as they set their faith in agreement with your word, believing your word, mix faith with your word. I ask, Father, that they will be encouraged, they will stand firm until they see your word fulfilled. Even now, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let there be a performance of things in their lives. The miracles of God, the divine interventions of God come forth in their lives, causing your word to be fulfilled in their lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way. something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, we say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like, the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower, you know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use and when you sing straight from the Word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because He is the Word and He is perfect theology. Oh God.